The world Jesus knew. Introduction Jesus never saw the world as we see it. Jesus saw and knew the world through the Holy Spirit because he was always filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sees our world always according to God's plan, purpose and will. God's plan, purpose and will for this fallen world establishes a new heaven and earth. The establishment of the kingdom of God on this earth has the objective of the release of the Holy Spirit in each person's heart, thanks to the redemptive work carried out by Jesus. The teachings of Jesus for the liberation of the world he faced. Jesus invited his disciples and followers to live in this world always in accordance with God's will to protect themselves from the end of time and achieve their salvation. Anticipating the end of times that will come and its imminent danger for the destruction of many souls, Jesus declared to this his disciples and followers, but take heed to ourselves, to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that they come upon you suddenly like a snare, for it will come upon all who dwell upon the face of the whole earth. But watch at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 34-36, Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition. What was Jesus referring to when he invited us to look into this world? for ourselves and be prepared. In Luke 12, 35 to 40, Jesus spoke in coded language so that those who could understand him would know how to prepare to counter Satan's attacks in this life by keeping mind, soul and spirit strong and ready to receive him at the least possible expected moment. A Nazarene affirmed, Let your loins be girded and your lamps burning, which means take care of the purity of your bodies so that the light of the Holy Spirit shines in them. Jesus said, And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the marriage feast so that they may open to him at once when he comes and knocks, which means Jesus will return to judge the living and the dead after having reunited with his Father and sitting at his right hand thanks to his redeeming work of humanity. Jesus said, Blessed are those servants for whom the Master finds a way when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will put on his apron and have them sit at the table and he will come and serve them. Which means, the servants from whom Jesus finds awake are wide awake thanks to the action of the light of the Holy Spirit in their hearts that has guided them in their lives through divine intelligence. Jesus said, if he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the householder had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have been awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. Which means Jesus can come during the day or night or during the first 
second or third part of our life and if we leave our house we sleep and we will be assaulted by Satan which means that we neglect the purity of our body which is the temple of the Holy Spirit due to the cares of this world and as its light no longer shines in our hearts and in our understanding we will sleep and lose the opportunity to receive awake the coming of Christ Jesus. Jesus said, You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition. Jesus sent the world a comforter that will fill us with life, joy, and strength, would give us physical and spiritual protection, and would guide us to make divine-based decisions, being a personal source of testimony and divine revelation. Jesus promised us invaluable and powerful help home once he returned with his Father to the third heaven. It was the help of the Holy Spirit consubstantial with his Father and with himself. And the first ones to receive this gift and the help of his light, power, and inspiration were his apostles, as St. Luke himself recounts in his Acts of the Apostles. Excellent news, because this divine help is now available to all followers of Jesus, who will conduct their lives following the will of God and walking with his teachings in their own individual redemption. And Jesus said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Luke 24, 49, Revised Standard Version, 2nd Catholic Edition. The world of the end times that the Apostle St. Paul anticipated. Are we in the end times already? To gain perspective on a possible answer to this question, we can use the enlightened insights of the Apostle Paul, who is often considered the most important person after Jesus in the history of Christianity, and whose insights came from Jesus himself. To help us in this search and to see what he anticipated, St. Paul, is already happening in our times and if we are already experiencing all these calamities. In his second letter to Timothy, St. Paul gives us a grim description of the selfish way of living of many members of our societies throughout the world in the last days when he warned Timothy. But understand this, that in the last days will come times of stress, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, arrogant, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, impious, inhuman, implacable, slanderers, licentious, fierce, despisers of good, treacherous, reckless, puffed up, with vanity, lovers of pleasure instead of lovers of God, upholding the form of religion but denying the power of it. Avoid such people. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5, Revised Standard Version, 2nd Catholic Edition. Unfortunately, this is a scenario in which we are already living and where some of our politicians fit this description closely. All these dark personalities are dominated by their inflated egos that have managed to harden their human hearts from which all evil manifestations spring because they do not have the light of the Holy Spirit. Also, in Timothy 4, 1-2, the Apostle Paul stated, But the Spirit expressly says, that in the last time some will fall away from the faith, listening to the deceitful spirit and doctrines of demons for claims of liars whose consciousness are seared 
that prohibit marriage. Revised Standard Version, Second Catholic Edition. Today, we're witnessing a relentless attack to destroy the human family as instituted by God through the perversion of children and to destroy marriage as instituted by our Father in heaven between a man and a woman. And this would be the end of the human family as conceived by God. And in order to further the social destruction of our families and our children, Satan, through his earthly followers, has succeeded in twisting human laws to accommodate the free perpetration of sin, wickedness and immorality in our fallen world, in which faith and obedience to the will of our Father in heaven are non-existent. Davalos 2023, The Daily Destruction of the Traditional Family, pages 3 and 12. Is this the end of time? Are we living it already? The world we are living in. Our world is sick. The activities that humanity has historically carried out for its subsistence and development in this relationship with our physical environment, especially after the Industrial Revolution, are affecting our natural habitat. Our ecological footprint is heavy and destructive and does not respect the limited resources of our planet. What awaits us? Nothing rosy, because we ourselves being the ones causing this damage to our natural environment are also living physically and mentally ill. If by mental health we understand thinking, feeling and acting from a level of emotional, psychological and social well-being, we are unfortunately, unfortunately, often disconnected from these basic satisfiers due to the stress and frustrations that our daily lives cause us. Unfortunately, owing to their profound interrelationship, our physical health also suffers when our mental health suffers. And how could it be otherwise if we live in a violent, unfair and chaotic world? A world in which an opulent, wealthy and powerful minority of psychopaths lead by the evil one relentlessly oppresses through fear permanent conflict between nations disease and scarcity an increasingly atheistic and secular humanity in which the power of the holy spirit and his vital and wise guidance is absent from their hearts the world that the saints see. The saints, thanks to their purity and holiness, see the world through the illuminating light of the Holy Spirit and consider it the raw material for the establishment of the kingdom of God. For them, even though the full establishment of the kingdom of God will take place when Jesus returns to this world, it is necessary to work from now on for the construction of a new heaven and earth and for this reason they propagate with their word and their example the teachings of Jesus and carry out works for the benefit of the neediest in our societies and with this they contribute to creating a new earth where the light of Jesus Christ shines. The Hindu yogi Paramahansa Yogananda who always saw Christ as a model of perfection, who wrote numerous articles on the Christian Gospels and even published a book on the Second Coming of Christ, commented on sainthood. A saint is a sinner who never gave up. Cardinal Jose Saraiva Martins in 2003 
in his reflection the lives of the saints show the world the divine and the human the eternal in time said that the saints are like beacons they show men and women the possibilities open to the human being in order to contemplate the face of Christ in the changing and diversified situations of the modern world we must look at the saints who are the living reflection of the face of Christ God shows men in a living way his presence and his face in the lives of our companions in the human condition who are more perfectly transformed into the image of Christ 2 Corinthians 3:18 All that is needed to make a man holy is grace Congregation for the Causes of Saints Vatican that be